right, some time ago we did the Battle of Breitenfeld uh, in uh, Gustav Adolphus the Great. Well, this is second Breitenfeld, nearly the same uh, location. And I haven't set it up entirely yet. You see, I haven't gotten my artillery into place. I also haven't gotten my orders down. But that's okay. Uh, this looks like a fairly clean-cut battle. Uh, you have an Imperial force trying to stretch itself out and outflank the Swedes there. The Swedes with a gap in their line themselves trying to maintain their own um, position. They have a smaller army overall, I guess. Uh, kind of hard to tell. Um, but it's higher quality, which should tell in this. And in fact, uh, slopes are mild here, so no biggie from them. Uh, in fact, about the uh, the victory conditions for this one, the Swedes are expected to do quite well. Uh, we got 120 points to reach draw in their favor, so they're going to have to do pretty well. Historically, they did. This was a good follow-up here to their their campaigns, and uh, eh, well, we'll see how it plays out. There's not a whole hell of a lot I can say about this one at this point. A lot of replacement leaders for the wings. That's kind of strange for the uh, Sweden fights on games. They mainly just rely on hey, some unnamed dude takes over, but here. You had a lot of historical casualties, and the Swedes are kind of encouraged to make historical casualties, as maybe are the Imperials with this guy, uh, at least, by having kind of crappy zero-point leaders along the line with better replacements. So that that's kind of a an incentive to get your leaders killed, because there's no real penalty to losing a zero-point uh, wing commander. The army commanders would matter. You got Tortensen here against the Archduke Leopold. Well, it looks like it's going to be a nice, clean, big fight. We'll see how it works out. Starting uh, orders Swedes are charging in the center and on their right. Their left is in receive charge, their reserve is in make ready back here. And over here for the Catholics, make ready on the left, as is their reserve cav special. This is kind of an optional rule using Piccolomini here. This could be part of the center, but it seemed kind of a slight advantage for the Imperials to give them a command there. Historically, that got wiped out and Piccolomini was disgraced for it. Uh, up on the hill, their center infantry is in received charge, and then they're charging on the right here. Um, I've got Croats here. I don't know. I should probably use the Croat rules from... Uh, uh, Saints in Armor, if I can recall, to do so. I think that, uh, oh, that would mean, that would mean something. I got the artillery here. I'm just wondering if I've got any, somewhere in Saints in Armor, there's a chart which handles those specifically. I'll have to find, dig that up. I may just play them as regular arquebusters, although that's uh, a little weird. Yeah, I dug those up. They give it a little bit more of a penalty in close combat, which I like. I don't know whether or not I should do the same for the Hungarians. Probably, where are they? They're kicking over here. They're probably the same kind of thing, but I'm going to deal with them as uh, arquebusters because I'm less certain about them. The Croats, I'm pretty sure, are actually meant to be that type. It's not actually specified, strangely enough, in the um, the errata for Sweden fights on. Maybe it's specified. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't see anywhere where it suggests that. I seem to remember, maybe under the Croats rules, I'll look that up. Yeah, sadly, they don't really give any uh, direct advice on modifying these and claiming that these are Croat type units. I'm definitely going to make the Croats that. I'm going to leave the Hungarians as regular arquebusters 
you know, less of a penalty to the Imperials, but they have the bonus of Piccolomini there. That should help them quite a bit, I think. Well, not really. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. And the Swedish right flank cav launches a massive attack. You can see they routed quite a few uh, of the Imperial cav. They also traded some casualties here. Four Swedes dead, three Imperials. One ran off the map chasing the Swedes. Uh, the Hungarians kind of just turned tail and ran. They were faced initially by um, cavalry with commanded drag with commanded musketeers embedded in them. So they were actually faster. They were able to withdraw from that. They didn't want to face the charge of those cuirassiers, uh, probably for best. And uh, I mean, they could counter charge and end up about equal. But over here we saw a lot of countercharging by the Imperials. And you can see they did a significant amount of damage. But the follow-up damage to the Imperials is heavier. We still got Piccolomini's Reserve, which can come in and maybe try to save the day there. Historically it got wiped out though. And now we were close enough that the Imperial right flank was actually within charging range. And they did so. You can see here the effect that Swedes basically got caught with their pants down now. They did manage a significant number of interceptions, but look at all the failures they got. But the interceptions they did were quite effective so far. Now, and you see some routing units and, and shaking units coming back. But they do have a follow-up attack coming up that second line. Ah, I haven't moved this guy yet. He's going to move forward. I don't think he's got a charge in place. And the effect of that attack... Uh, Mixed results. I, the Imperials didn't get as much out of their second wave as I had hoped for them. A few hits here. Ooh, I didn't take care of this one either. Hmm. Well, let's take a look. That's uh, plus one for me, both the throwing in guns. Uh, plus three for the Imperials there. Roll that off real fast. I lost the... Uh, that's going to be another attacker. The attackers failed in a lot of cases. That's going to be them falling back again. Uh, they also did not get a continuation. And they've got this routed unit that they're, uh, that Leopold's trying to rally. And now the most impressive infantry charge I've seen yet. One unit here, and this is second line. I shouldn't have even thrown it in. Got routed from uh, the fire here. But these guys all here are just charging full speed. They're almost all formation broken. Ooh. As this guy moves up, I can fire at him. I've got to shoot that artillery to see if I can break this guy up. Overall, I'd say that was of mixed effectiveness. The Swedes broke uh, most of the Imperial line, and you can see they killed a couple of Imperial units there. Is that two or three? There's three holes in the line. What happened to the other unit? Ah, uh, yeah, it's three units. Okay. One of which was destroyed because it couldn't retreat uh, and get away from the enemy. The Swedes themselves couldn't retreat here because they can't pivot. They were just morale shaken. So they took additional losses, a couple extra losses for the Hexes they couldn't retreat. This guy marched up the hill, got shot, and fell back down. Now we got to check for continuation, see if I can try to reform that. That was a massively bloody attack, and now the Imperials are in a position where they can just advance forward and drive the Swedes back off the hill. Um, that does not, I don't think it was an effective use of my Swedish uh, infantry, to tell you the truth. But I did want to try it out. I haven't done something like that before. I'm tired of just playing it out very cautious. I think the Swedes historically uh, made quite a rash charge here. A bit of filling out with the Swedish infantry marching forward here. The two uh, cav wings, well, Piccolomini's reserve has been committed some char uh, charge and an attack across here. Um, some of it successful, some of it not so much. This guy is running away. But another one managed, where this uh, formation broken unit is, managed to knock out another Swede. Uh, meanwhile, obviously rallies going on uh, where the army commanders are. Now we're over to the receive charge side, which is that left flank for the Swedes and the left flank for the Catholics. Oh, no, they were, no, I'm sorry, the center for the Catholics. The left flank was uh, 
it, it moved into a receive charge to try to rally. In fact, I actually took some a couple of risky rallies, the uh, morale broken units, because they looked like they were pretty close to running off the map, and my army commander's over here, so I wasn't going to get a chance to rally everything. I didn't think and that's the case. Um, I rallied one that I was able to. I actually got lucky with one of those and managed to roll the requisite one. I made two of the checks. This one I figure I'm going to try to get as he runs away. Well, that's actually the end of things because I lost my commander over here in the center infantry wing for the Catholics. I'm going to make a check on them. But this is our position at the end of the first turn. Uh, leader loss, leader replacement. Okay, we're going to have him come back at the end of next turn. But we get the replacement for Deloy, DeRoy's, something like that. He's probably better. I'll go check on him. There's our casualties for the first turn. We had a Swede running through this gap here getting shot up and he was destroyed by that. Probably would have had, had a better chance if he didn't have a, a possible route to, a route to route. Uh, and a couple of routed units coming off the board there. Got an early morning today, but uh, I'm going to start make sure I'm online before normal time. Um, but uh, Piccolomini's force got the first activation. The Catholics, because of Piccolomini, got the uh, early activation because he's they had two charging units and he's the best leader on the board. He was unable to get out of charge and ended up moving forward, causing an interception by this dude uh, at like plus three. Destroyed him. Piccolomini's now in the potentially dead space and that ends his activation. We go to a Swedish one. Swedish activate their infantry, um, and they couldn't get them into rally, so they had to move one unit forward. But here, this is something interesting, and I'm beginning to realize some of the beauty of this system uh, that I hadn't really noticed before. These uh, Catholics attacked, you know, melee attack against this poor thing here um, during the Swedish turn, and high morale unit with more pike behind it in such a way as it can't retreat. These big double units that really are, you know, almost like a phalanx. Well, if you have them in double depth with a line directly behind, it can't retreat. So it gets forced onto here. If it's got a decent morale, like these do, it gets a plus one. It's got a good chance of standing, actually, and just not being affected. Just standing there and taking it. The, the, the phalanx versus phalanx push is what's going on here. And, you know, the game, the rules are kind of sparse, so they don't point to how that works out. But when you start to think about it, you start to see why it's happening. Well, the Swedes were unable to get themselves into a uh, command that could rally up there on the hill. Uh, so there, yeah, and I was just trying to get to make ready because that would allow me to at least reform everything. They're pretty much in trouble there if the uh, forces, if the uh, Catholics come and hit them. Oh, I've got a melee attack here again if I want it. That's at plus one. I'd say plus two, I'm gonna take it. I already rolled for the failed continuation, but let's do this attack at plus two. It's at plus two because uh, there's casualties here. This is only size five, so I get plus one for the uh, difference in size, plus one for the formation advantage. Um, that gets me an eliminated, so I'm going to take them off the map. It's going to be formation broken now. We don't get any fire, do we? Yeah, we get fire from this thing. That's, uh, that's going to be frontal fire. No artillery on that. I don't think I want to salvo it. So I do a casualty to 
These guys, which does not force a morale check because their morale is high enough at 7. Hmm, looks like we're pushing forward here. Oh, trying to see what happened. I don't remember what I did first. Uh, I think this uh, Catholic wing uh, made one more attack round and then slipped into make ready. Wasn't really able to recover much. I'm kind of taking it with the ca uh, cautious movement, not trying to jump right into receive charge. That's tough for Cav. I was forgetting about that modifier for a while. Uh, but now that I have it in mind, I'm paying attention to it again. And likewise, over here, I wasn't actually able to get out of charge into even make ready. Taking the same caution. The Swedes' first attack, they went along with. Uh, and, and they're really kind of clearing this up. It's hard to see what's what. But these routed units back here are all uh, Catholic and Imperial. And then there's just this mess of a normal Cav fight. Some Imperials are still left in here, but for the most part, the Swedes seem to be winning that flank. Um, if they can turn around and, and start to cause problems to the Imperial infantry, I don't know if they're going to get a chance to get there in time, though. If the Imperials get to move forward, they can really light up the Swedish infantry's day, and that's going to be ugly, very ugly. Um, yeah. Carl Gustav's reserve infantry is flung into the fight, and that does not go well at all. You can see that two of the units are routing now. Those are the two. They made flank attacks on uh, Catholic units, but we had die rolls of zero and one there. Enough to break them. They were only making the attacks at minus one, at plus one, which isn't a terribly good attack. It does give the benefit to, to them, but uh, it did not go at all well. And now we see the Swedish center is just collapsing here. I don't think this is going to go uh, terribly well for the Swedes, the way the center's uh, handling itself. I think we're done with everything except the Catholic Infantry Center. Uh, no, we still got this Swedish division over here. The uh, left wing is also in received charge. I thought they had lost their leader. All right, this Swedish left flank cav did some impressive work. You can see some of theirs were routed, but they killed a couple of uh, Catholic units. One of their own ran off the board, which kind of negates some of the effect of that. Uh, I got some cleanups and routing units to take care of a lot of Catholics down here, for example. Um, I'll take care of them in a moment, but somewhat more important, I got a couple of Catholic leaders who have to go. First of all, I have De Soys, who has come back, and I think he is replacing Faramont back here, taking command of this unit again. But I got a couple of these as well that I got to figure out where they're going to go. Neither one. Oh, Piccolomini is a big deal. So let's roll for Piccolomini first. Yeah, he's uh, he's out of play, so i got to get a potential replacement for him. I think he gets a colonel, because this was... Um... See, it's weird, because this is a, uh, a unit that isn't really in, in effect. Uh, it's sort of an option whether this unit's here or not. But Piccolomini goes into my dead pile, and he's worth a good 10 points, so that'll be bonus for the Swedes there. And this one is very clearly gone as well. Bornabelle. I don't know what we're going to get as a replacement. Probably someone, well, there's definitely someone from there. We'll see.